All right, so pulls, heavy, um, distance control, partly from strike, yep. Okay, so the first thing, um, so distance control will come from flight control, okay? Think about it like this. If you swung your golf club at 50 miles an hour, all right, and you um, produced the same dynamic loft each time, right? So you, you're using your 56 and you produce 50 degrees of loft, for example, to the ball. That's dynamic loft. Um, and you launched the golf ball in a, in a very similar window each time, okay? Somewhere between 25 and 30 degrees would be a good little launch window. You would have some pretty good distance control, right? If you can control the amount of loft you're presenting, flight it through a certain window, and swing it at the same speed, providing middle contact, you will have really, really good distance control, okay? If you had good, dis if you had good contact, you had good speed control with your club, but you launched it one high, one low, one medium, one high, right? That's where distance control starts to falter. So launch is really, really important when it comes to short game, okay? Uh, well, sorry, wedge play, I should say. Well, short game in general as well, but, but um, long game, uh, sorry, wedge play, all right? So why do you hit, so just go back into your messages there. So pulls and the odd heavy. Okay, let's address the pulls. The pulls would be from a path moving out to in. Okay, typically with a closed club face, all right? So, or a, a closed face to the path, I should say. Not necessarily a closed face, but a closed face to the path. So if we look at your swing overall, takeaway looks fairly good, right? Wouldn't say the takeaway's, out, um, the takeaway's outside. I actually think that looks pretty good. Um, look at the downswing. A little bit steep through here, right? Especially in that spot there. Definitely quite steep, all right? So if we're going to use the, the trail arm as a reference point, it's steeper than that, okay? So, or what I might even do is I might even say, well, I know we can't see the top of the club here, but I could almost say like one, two, three, Right, let's change the color on this. So the downswing now, you can see here, same spot. We miss, we miss a bit of a frame here, but you could probably say that that's in and around there. And then it's definitely higher than um, the red. So you can see you're going back on the red, coming down on the green. So you're going, going back in, you know, in a good spot. And then on the green, you're coming down over the top. Now, to avoid the pull, Sorry, let's keep going with that. So that's where the pull's coming from. So if the face is a little bit yeah, close to the path, we get that ball going a little left. To avoid the pull, the upper body will start to tip back just a little bit. Now, if our upper body tips, uh, tips back, we would move our low point back here. So we'd start to um, hit it heavy, okay? What does that do to then distance control? Well. If we hit it, if, if we back up, we're losing the shaft lean. We're adding loft. Okay, so now I now our dynamic loft is changing, our ground contact's changing, um, our shaft lean's changing, and all of that controls how high or low the ball's going to go. Okay, so what we'd want to do, and I think this happens on this um, this one on the right as well. So you can see, um, yeah, it just comes down more over the plane or, or more above the plane than, than when you went back, okay? Um, so what I would be asking you to do is let's try and feel like you draw your wedges, okay? So if you were to get to the top of the swing like you do here really well, and we put that there, the downswing would wanna come down a little bit more underneath that green, right? So you'd kind of want this club, like I said, in the downswing to kind of be a little bit more under that first green one, okay? From there, we can start to generate a little bit more of an into-out path 
and the toe of the club, or not the toe, but like the, the, the face kind of releasing with our, with our path. That would get the ball to kind of go a little bit more this way. Okay, a little bit more draw feel. What that would do, as we know, we've done this in the full swing, is remember, more shallow facilitates rotation. When we can get that club shallower, we can push forward and rotate. When we get the club steeper, we're going to have to back up in order to shallow it. Now in wedge play, it's really crucial that we don't hit the ball, <laughs> especially in wedge play and where you play, right, muddy conditions, we don't want that low point too far behind the ball. More importantly, we don't really want it deep into the ground either. So when you back up, you're lowering the club and imagine that this was a, a, you know, imagine this was water, this mat was water, you don't want this club diving in, right? You want it kind of skimming the water, if that makes sense, okay? So I want you to try and feel like you draw your wedges, okay? And that will improve your contact and your, and your flight, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now the system, let's talk about the system when you've got the flight a little bit better. So come back to me when your flight's good to go, right? Or when you feel like your flight's good. And then what we'll do is we'll, um, uh, we'll create a bit of a system for your wedge play. Now, ideally, what you might want to get as well, have you got some kind of launch monitor that you can track distances with? That's what I'd probably want to know um, because for wedge play, you definitely want some accurate carry numbers um, in order to get some good, to get, um, some good data and, and um, feedback. All right, so mate, really good, but yeah, just try and, try and feel like you draw those wedges a lot more